Sonic Colors itself was a great game, whichever way you decide to play it. The Wisps are the beautiful level themes, the Wisps will stick with you long after you finish the game. You always had a new power to discover, and in turn, this meant the game was surrounded by gimmicks. Colors is often criticised for this, but I feel it remains an underrated ingredient of the franchise. I can easily recall swinging around on vines in a forest, I remember being chased by an endangered species. I remember the purple, pu purple water because, um, <laughs> um <laughs> it stood out, not just in the Sonic franchise, but among other platforming grits. But that's not why I'm here today. <laughs> no, no, Sonic Colors is ultimate now, yep, and in fact it's actually been two whole years since I lost my innocence. This remaster is, what's the word? Infamous, Second Son, don't know if I would say it's garbage as the game is still fun to play, however it really does have more issues than people who pour the milk before they eat their cereal. Like, And yeah, the biggest issue to me is how this game was handled post launch. Abandoned is the only word you can use really, it's been almost two whole years since the last patch it ever received, which didn't didn't seem right to me, until I used my magic phone to verify. Now after a series of content updates for Sonic Frontiers, with Origins Plus releasing back in June and Superstars on the horizon, looking extremely polished and 60 FPS on Switch, <laughs> I wanted to beg the question. Why is he like this and should we put him down? These two were announced at the exact same time. But get this, the twist is that Sega didn't leave them starving on the street. I admit I am being lenient with this geezer over here. Origins was absolutely in the same barrel as CU, but then they did add math to it, so. First, I'm gonna attempt to speed through my issues with the game. It's not just technical ones, so I will preface this with maybe some of this is just personal preference, or it's fact because I am never wrong. Screen stutter, sometimes, it's not that bad, sometimes it is, you know what I think sometimes, I it should never be a case of sometimes, Generations basically doesn't have this issue. Uh, the lying system, yeah this, this one's a biggie. Ugh, this, this shit was molded, no it was carved off of, of a, a, a guy being flashbanged over and over. Sure there, there are times when the lying looks good good, but mostly the game's crisp, I just said great, but mostly the game's crisp textures are basically being slathered in Greece, most notably in Tropical Resort. Blind people could see this. And then there's Blue Boy. What the f*** is wrong with him today? Sonic looks like one of those beefcakes in bodybuilder competitions that grease themselves up to look delicious. Eviler than that, he features this, this drawn on smile like they yanked him from Smash Ultimate if you don't see the issue, tell me, does any other Sonic game look like that? Did Takashi Izuka, not the wrestler, not the wrestler, see this and say, What, what is Christian? No, he didn't. The new UI. I really think they wanted to make a better UI and simply couldn't allocate the time there. I mean, with how it launched, not out. But hell, look at Rival Rush. The obese X icon, front and center, tiny subtitle, medium big main title, fucking splash screen. Looks like the thumbnail to a cone rap pal. It was a rush job and made the overall experience just that tiny bit crappier. So much of it just isn't appealing to look at, especially in areas where you can compare it to the original. On top of that, it has the gall to lag, so you know, I'll just find a place to lay down and sleep off the rage fade, stick it out of my chin. It all comes together to just have this real derailing effect on all of the graphics, even the good parts. Graphics options. You get V-Sync 
and full screen, and most graciously, we even received resolution sizes. Wow, what else could you need? So spoiled I am. It isn't even just a PC complaint. Well, why why not have those options on console for, for a Wii game? Letting you have a low performance, high quality, high performance, low quality mode on consoles would be a game changer. Better looking games run at 60 FPS on Switch. Now, I'm not gonna hold them to the standard, only a few games that here too. I am fair, it's just not, not being able to alter graphics on a PC game released in 2021 just doesn't just feel stupid, it feels dumb. Glitches, just straight up. What, what, what the, what the fuck? Sega, it was supposed to be a remaster. Remasters should be definitive, no excuses. Have you ever bought a remaster labeled the OK poll with some definite benefits and bonus glitches. Edition, that's right. I didn't think so. I get that there are small issues that will come up with the introduction of new elements. But okay, here's my suggestion. Get your thumbs and press down on their eye sockets. I don't know if lucky's the right word, but co Colors Ultimate didn't assault, slobber, and pelt me with glitches as bad as everyone else got. That said, they, they were still a pervasive issue across all three of my playthroughs. Cutscenes, which I'm pretty sure were AI upscaled. Not that big of a deal if you don't pick up on it, but when you do, you can't unsee the gross interpolation. Removing the multiple save system. The hell did it do? They just disintegrated it for no reason I can discern. DRM, I'm not even gonna elaborate. DRM, DRM, who the f I said I wasn't gonna elaborate. DRM, DRM. <sighs> I could go on and on and on and on, but that's all I'm gonna address right now. Sure, certain aspects of this remaster are pretty good changes, but do you really think I would be bringing that up? Nope. No positivity, no, just <laughs> not to do. They certainly weren't gonna be short of ideas with how much room for improvement was left here. So much room a family could squat there. But again, why was the game abandoned? Let's start at the head, no, <laughs> the eyes with blind squirrel. <laughs> Were they blind making this? <laughs> Shokes.com, you've done it again. BS was the main developer, not Sonic Team, like a lot of people seem to believe. These guys are gonna be my focus for a bit, as they would have been mainly responsible for subsequent updates. Now, they've had a few misses, including colours, but you would think these miscreants normally seem competent enough to not recreate a, a demon core. Still, let's take a look at the shenanigans Blind Squirrel got themselves into since 2021. Massive Legendary Edition and Sonic Colors Ultimate were being developed concurrently with Massive coming out earlier. What's interesting is that people were mostly saying Mass Effect was not a hate crime. You can trust my opinion. I've only played 13 minutes of the first one on 360, so although it is worth knowing, they weren't the primary developers of this project. If you go onto their site, you can see that Blind Squirrel's main squeeze the past few years has been co-developing New World, which is a ORPG from Team Bezo. Another focus could be this original IP of theirs. Let me get this right. <clears throat> Loot is loot the loot, loot loot. It's time to loot, it's loot. Let's loot this element, loot time. You would assume it's still being worked on as it is in early access, but here's the dealio stretch. This game's last update on Steam was goddamn June of 2021. I, I didn't even get my COVID microchip at that point. That's how long ago it was. It's seemingly abandoned. Maybe, maybe they are gearing up for a big cave update or something where you can loot a big cave or whatever else that might entail. That only leaves blah, 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 which is certifiably the last thing they worked on that has been released. It came out June this year. But what I'm trying to say is unless they have something hidden away in development and I find it unlikely they wouldn't want it known all this time, Blind Squirrel has not been juggling a bucket of games since the last patch came out, like they had been in previous years. They've definitely been doing substantial things on blah blah blah, but I don't know man, Blind Squirrel could totally find the time to update the game, implement more fixes, change the lying, address anything, like one thing. 
you know, uh, fulfill the obligations people expect of you. Unfortunately, that leads into some of the things I've seen online. Ultimate was obviously rushed. It was picked up and put in the oven and someone said, okay, give me a second, except they took that literally. A Metal Sonic skin was planned and cut. Maybe you would say, oh, I bet that's just a rumor because it seems likely. No, they literally put this shit in text. It was in the files. A man wrote this down like a plea for help. So the bastards who managed this development team clearly weren't human beings but demons from Jezebel's wicked mind, allegedly. I was interested in seeing if anyone spilled the beans and found these reviews. These posts were made fairly shortly after it came out and you, you can read it for yourself. This is real nasty stuff and very rough to look at. Not everyone has the same experience, sure, but I find it hard to believe that if this can happen to one person that it wouldn't occur to everyone. Also, the project they're referring to must be Sonic Colors Ultimate. This is just speculation based on the facts I can find. I should say, they could all be talking about loot shoot, but the immoral sinful wrath of it that was this game's launch must have been such a tumultuous development that people just had to lash out or leave. The main association here is the timing, but including these other two, bad reviews are spread out across the whole year. Smack dab in 2021. It's gotta be more than a coincidence. The lying referred to in this review could perhaps be referring to how Sega maybe thought the game was in better condition because they sure as hell don't have an outside client when it comes to the on published IP. Another thing to point out, there are several one-star reviews on Glassdoor for this company. One of these was written in 2019, two of them in 2017. The other four? 2021. Four stinkers in a single year. It's quite an exception, is it not? I don't think it can be overstated how bad this game must have been for Blind Squirrel games. Uh, I've heard of Borderlands Game of the Year was Body, but from what I can see, nothing BSG had a hand in was quite this bad in terms of the negative PR it got. These poor bastards don't even X around anymore. This, that, that is insane that this was their last Z. So like, what did they stand to gain by not patching up their Frankenstein? Absolutely nothing, but a bad reputation. What they've done is show what they're willing to put people through in a development cycle. And they've also shown what they'll call a finished product, only to not cost correct if they are indeed the ones choosing not to update this game. So either they had such a bad time developing Ultimate that no one at Blind Squirrel even wants to touch it, or the more likely scenario is Sega does not want to work with a company who will lie to them. Then there's the moolah. The moolah. The dough. The cash. The coins. Was money an issue when it came to supporting a Sonic Sega makes hundreds of per million per year. So I would say no, but bear with me. Now, Sega does not typically release exact sales figures. Uh, unlike Nintendo, hell, we still have no clue how well Forces actually did. On the other on the hand, Ruined Frontiers received detailed numbers. In December, they announced it reached 2.5 million. Six months later, 3.5 million. I'm pretty sure that includes digital, but maybe not. It would be weird if it wasn't. But okay, look, if Sonic Frontiers, a massive mainline title reaching 3.5 million units, greatly exceeds their expectations, it kind of doesn't make sense to assume that Colors Ultimate reached anywhere near those figures, because otherwise we wouldn't be having this conversation right now. That doesn't mean it flopped, but I don't, I don't know, I, I guess the, the original Wii game did reach 2 million on only one platform. Considering this remaster was on 4, maybe Sega expected bigger numbers and were disappointed with how it performed. But see, that number is what I want to figure out. First up is this yearly quarter they released. This is a number of Sonic game sales of all platforms and it could even include games spawn on Xbox 360. So it's fair to say that can't all me see you. For comparison, that's last year with no CU or any new release. However, that does help us figure out where the CU lies in wake. 600,000 is the difference and the closest number we have. However, this report was released very shortly after Ultimate came out and only represents three months. Are there any solid numbers for the game after this? Not? Not really. According to these three various sources, it sold 663,000 altogether. But there are some caveats. These numbers largely come from Play Tracker, which 
these hornswoggles can confirm there's a margin of uh, what, 326 damn percent for the Steam version. What the fuck, man? See, either no one played it, or hundreds of thousands of people played it. Oh, oh. Of course! The 2.6k for Switch comes only from physical Japanese sales. This is expected as Sonic is tiny there, but it's a small number. It's that's, it's not indicative of overall Japanese sales. Oh, and that number was last updated about a, a, a fucking uh, week after it came out. And the majority of this number, PS4, is locked behind a goddamn Patreon, so I have to put faith in their trophy tracker. This sucks, I'm sorry for bringing it up, but, but, but my point is 600,000 is a number we've seen twice for sales of this game now. In fact, 600,000 exclusively represents the PS4, where in the UK accounted for 32% of ultimate sales. So it's fair to assume that the game must have reached a million by the time the big holiday season hit. The United States are the biggest market for Sonic, so I, I wanted to see how it could have done there in comparison to other games. And PD's charts for September 2021 placed Colors Ultimate and number 13. A good thing about NPD is it's accurate to a T as it includes digital and physical sales information when possible. But you know, none of this even includes Epic Games, where the game was actually store exclusive on PC. What's important is it's above WarioWare, which has no digital sales included, but is a fairly popular series in the US, second only to Japan. By comparison, that game went on to sell around 1.4 million altogether, with a similar, if not less, amount of buzz on YouTube and the internet. There's also the UK chart where it placed at number 3. Still no digital, but again, WarioWare was just two places above it. And finally, we've got the Steam release. Sorry, okay. Uh, basically, there's a method to figure out Steam sales by review. T take this with a, a grain of salt. You multiply the number of reviews by a sales number. 58 sales per one review is the median 63, the average. Super popular games are at 200 reviews per sale. You're probably wondering where this comes from. Simon Carless did the research for this by getting their sales information directly from the developer, from 237 games, mind you. So let's do 60 by 363. That is 21,780, and actually fairly close to what's listed on Play Tracker. So I'd say it's a believable number. Now, is that a good number? Number? I don't think so, man, but let's see Monkey Ball, a fellow Sega prisoner. But now, now it's closing in on 1k. Using the NB method, it eventually sold 59,760 copies. So Sonic is way more popular, doing worse numbers for a similar type of remaster. Sure, the buzz around it was gone at this point, but we know why. Regardless, Steam was the last nail in the coffin of hope. Wrap up my tin foil speculation as to Sonic Colors Ultimate most certainly could have reached, reached 1.5 million altogether. I feel like I'm lowballing that. Consider that it's on more platforms than WarioWare and that Sonic 2 released shortly after, boosting sales. I, you know, I mean, if they aren't telling us what Colors Ultimate's exact figures are, 1.5 mil is probably not enough to be proud of. Yes, it should be enough to break even and then some, if Sega was happy with the numbers, I don't see why they wouldn't have been willing to keep working on the game in 2022. While I think it's sold enough in a moral sense, Sega probably wanted more sales to further justify paying for updates. They could have also perceived a lack of interest from fans. I know practically everyone in the fan base cares about it being fixed, me included, but the game basically hasn't been talked about since it came out. There's only so many times you can repeat, yeah, they blinded us, and I got seizures, and get this, get this, my eardrums are bleeding because I hit the jump spring. Sega possibly took it being forgotten as a message that there isn't worth in continuing the project. Don't get me wrong, it's a crappy excuse to justify leaving a beloved game with tons of problems. Problems they themselves cause, absolutely. I simply wanted to piece it all together. Unfortunately, that's about as much piecing as I can think of, that there's not 
that much information online about Sonic Colors Ultimate development or uh, post development. So all those things combined, yeah, a spotty sales history, a deeply troubled production, a blind squirrel's questionable availability, the DRM, the, the fact that it wasn't Mod Finley allegedly lying to your client, allegedly, you can form your own conclusion as to what exactly went down the past few years. Could be all of those factors are the reason. <sighs> I, I gotta say, it's it's been disheartening to see it ignored, especially with Sonic's resurgence in popularity. Well, why wouldn't you want every game to reflect very well on potential new fans? Good enough just feels nasty to me at this point. Uh, personally, I think that just was no drive within Sega to fix an outsourced game. You know, no juice, not enough people to give a damn. Blind Squirrel maybe doesn't want to deal with it anymore and blind Sega doesn't see the point. They just want to move on and on and on to the next projects. Maybe someone like Izuka does genuinely care and has kept Ultimate in the back of his mind, but being the chief Chief creative officer isn't always enough to sway the executives who, let's face it, probably aren't aware of what a color ultimate is supposed to be. Izuka had to practically beg for an extra year of time with Frontiers. And as much as that game made me think, Sega understands that the long term matters more than the short term. Colors Ultimate says the exact opposite. It says to me they can't commit to building back the lost trust and seeing Sonic Colors Ultimate dragged through the mud then Enabled by Kiyoi's, then abducted, then strangled, felt tiring. The double whammy of this and Origins that was. Disappointment isn't a strong enough word. I was mind boggled. Yeah, and uh, following up with a genuinely good 3D Sonic like four months later. Fab flabbergasted. It all just reaffirmed that Sega won't stop making stupid, stupid, dumbass mistakes with Sonic the Hedgehog. <sighs> yep, that's how you fucking know Sega is back, baby! Woo! If they can go 10 years, no, no, uh, 5 years without astronomically fudging up a game, then sure, we can rest easy with the Sonic Adventure remake and our Dreamcast 2s. Until that happens, don't forget what they did to a great game and what they did to the legacy section on the Wikipedia of the great game. On that depressing note, that's all from me. If you like weeping and want to cry some more, find out what Sonic Forces did wrong right there. Because no one has the faintest idea, it's a mystery. Like, whatever, it's up to you, I guess. I don't even, I don't even care that much. I really, I really, I don't.